What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Motive Loot is back. I mean, not really, but just for, the, just for a video. So on today's video, we're gonna be reviewing Motive's newest asymmetrical ball, the Pride. Now, I was told by so, so, so many people how special this ball was that even though I'm a free agent and even though I resigned from Motive, I still absolutely had to see what the hype is all about behind this Motive Pride. So if you guys like this video and you want to continue to see reviews from Motive, Storm, Brunswick, whatever the case may be, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And then down below in the description, there's a link where you can order a Motive Pride. If you're going to order this ball or any bowling ball or anything bowling related based on my recommendation, I would super appreciate it if you click the link in the description so that Bowlers Mart know that I sent you. They are a direct sponsor and supporter of this channel. So let's get into the tech. According to Motive's website, the weight block is the Dominion weight block, okay, which in 15 pounds has an RG of 2.50, which is like kind of in the medium, really, because a low RG would be like 247, high would be like 255. So this is kind of like right in the middle. The max differential is 042, which is again, right in the middle. And then the intermediate differential is 0 0.010. So not very high intermediate differential. So everything about this ball screams medium benchmark and motive is advertising this ball as the ultimate um, benchmark ball, versatility ball, control ball, okay? The cover is a modified version of the coercion cover stock. So it's the coercion UCS solid that comes out of box at a 4,000 grit laser scan sand finish. So we're gonna be bowling here at Suncoast on a fresh typical house shot. And then the layout as always is 45 by four and a half by 45, which when I drop the pin actually turns to 40 by four and a half by 40. So whatever you guys think. So this ball has already been released. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys have a Motive Pride or if you're planning on ordering one and what you're thinking about it so far. Let's take this out on the lanes and see what it's all about. Yeah, and then... So those are the first five shots there on this fresh typical house shot with the Pride. And the first thing that popped out to me was that the core and cover and surface combination of this ball wasn't biting itself the whole way down the lane. Sometimes with, not, not Motive, just with some brands, sometimes they like to put like a really high RG core with a bunch of surface on it and it kind of fights itself going down the lane. This ball seems as, I mean, first five shots, seems as if the core and cover combo are in sync. The core wants it to get a little bit further down lane, wants it to shape a little bit, and the cover being that it's at 4,000 kind of enhances that. It's not fighting it. And it'll be interesting to see what happens as I move left. So the first couple shots that I threw there, I thought were a little bit too straight, a little bit too far or too much in front of me. So as I move left, it'll be interesting to see if this thing continues to shape, continues to continue. And because what I don't want to see is, is as I move left, I don't want to see it bouncing off the, the, the head pin and running over the nine pin. I want to see it going towards the eight pin. That ran over the apron. Damn! All right, so now I, I, I really like what I'm seeing out of this ball. It, it really allows me to play like my game with this ball where I can keep it a little bit in front of me. I don't have to create a whole lot of angle. 
It reads the middle part of the lane. Oh God, now I sound like a typical staffer, except I'm not a staffer, so I can say that. It reads the middle part of the lane. And what I liked was that when I moved left and encountered more oil in the middle part of the lane, it still wanted to do its thing. It still was the pride, even though I completely changed the angle that I was playing. So we're just gonna continue to move it left throughout this video, like I always do, and see what the limits are of this ball. Once I get far enough left, I'll definitely move back right a little bit and see what it looks like from a little bit straighter. Oh! Missed left on that one a little bit. So now that we're fairly far left, I will say that I think it looks better from a little bit straighter than those last group of shots. I mean, it's don't get me wrong, it's still reading the pattern, it's still going through the pins. Just my eyes like it better from a little bit straighter. So what it does remind me of though is, it reminds me of like a stronger version of the recoil but that actually shapes. I mean, the recoil for me was always a ball that I liked it to keep it in front of me on short patterns when there's a lot of friction. But the way this ball reads the middle part of the lane reminds me a lot of that recoil, but in the back part of the lane, it is completely different. And those are completely different covers, completely different cores than this Pride. I'm just saying that the shape is very similar. So on this next group of shots, I'm gonna move about another five or six left and that'll be the furthest left I get in the video. Yeah, I'd... So from that part of the lane, it didn't look amazing. I mean, I could still find a way to strike as long as I keep my angles a little bit more shut down, but it definitely doesn't like the larger angles. So for my Moda fans out there, if you're starting in something like this Pride, I think a really good go-to ball would be the Enzo, the Super Enzo. I know it has a higher RG, the differential is a little higher if I remember correctly but the shape seemed a little bit familiar, just more down lane, which is kind of what you want to see. So I really think that the Pride into the Enzo for the Motive fans, I think that's going to be a really good combo. So now I'm going to move back right a little bit because it, I think there's no sense in getting that far left with this ball because it'll never be a situation that I would, like I can't imagine a scenario or a situation where I'd get that far left for my game at least on a house shot. So we're going to say we'll move a little bit further right, keep it a little bit more in front of us, and see if we can continue to make this ball look half decent. Oh, that's a good shot. This is two and one from the last couple shots here. So I definitely think that that's the part of the lane on the house shot that I need to play with this ball. Or maybe not so much the part of the lane, but the angle and the trajectory. Meaning I want to keep the ball a little bit more in front of me. I don't want to be shooting it to the right because that's not when this ball is gonna look good. I, I really think that those angles are the ones where I'm gonna have to play with this ball. 
And at least I know that. So now I know that when I need that, I know which ball to go to. Now we're gonna move like another five right, maybe six right. And I, I think that I'm definitely gonna have to force it a little bit to play that part of the lane because this ball is pretty strong. But we're gonna see what it looks like from a little bit straighter before we get into that versatility test. Oh, definitely gonna have to up the speed here a little bit. No way. So I'm gonna move like three or four left off that because it's just way too strong when I try to get that straight. Oh boy, that was such a bad shot. This ball doesn't look very good from straight, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move back left for the last shot here. We're nearing the end of this video, and I really wanted to say that this ball is versatile, but that would be a lie. I don't think that this ball is very versatile. When I moved right, it wanted to pick up way too soon. And then when I get left and have to create angle, it just ain't it. But the good thing is, is that it reminds me a lot of like the Obsession Tour. Not the ball motion at all, but that it's not versatile, but it's really, really good at what it wants to do. So that middle part of the lane, that transition stage, this ball I think really shines. So now we're gonna get into the versatility test and I'm gonna have to throw a fireball up the right side to try to get this to not hook, get through the fronts and strike. So let me know down below in the comments if you think that this Motive Pride is gonna be versatile or not. I'm gonna, I'm leaning towards the no, but you never know. No chance. for three so it's been quite some time since i went 0 for three in the versatility test but zone two and zone three were both really good shots i thought that at least had a chance to strike zone one i i knew that this ball had absolutely no chance it picked up way 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 too soon but this ball will be in the bag for me when i bowl that doubles regional with michael martell he said i absolutely had to have this ball so i got it very importantly, guys, I say this all the time. If you guys are going to order anything based on my recommendation or based on these videos and what you're seeing, click the link in the description to make sure that I get credit for the sale so that Bowler's Mart knows that I sent you so that I can continue to show my value and my worth to that company. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for the support. You guys are amazing. Click right here to watch one of my other videos. Click right here to subscribe, to join the I was going to say Motive Lou Nation, but there's no such thing as Motive Lou anymore. The Louis Nation. Till next time.